Well, hello. Hello and welcome. Welcome to Around the Town with Mark. I am Mark Whelan, your host. And yes, we're always glad to have you tune in and visit with us. Well, you can certainly see around me that I'm just surrounded by beautiful, beautiful art. And we're going to be giving you an art demonstration today by one of our premier artists of the area. We're also going to be talking about art on Groton Bank, that outdoor art festival that's scheduled for Saturday, June 9th, in the grounds of the beautiful Bill Memorial Library. And that same day this year, it happens to be Groton Bank Day, which means all kinds of wonderful historic forts and homes are all going to be open free of charge all around that area. We're going to have the water taxi operating from New London to to the Groton side, right down the, uh, the road from Art and Groton Bank. That's going to be free running all day long. We're going to have a free shuttle service, ample parking. So Art and Groton Bank, put that on your calendar. We'll talk more about it later on in the show, but it's going to be a great event. And uh, so without any more ado, let me introduce our artist of the day today, Liz McGee. Liz, welcome to Around the Town with Mark. Well, thank you, Mark. We're delighted to have you, and obviously, as I said, people can see all of your beautiful work that we're surrounded with. Um, you certainly are a, an award-winning um, well. artist and instructor of the area, so it's, it's, it's great to have someone of your caliber come and talk to us about art, what you do, and your participation in art in Groton Bank. Well, good. So, introduce yourself. Well, uh, like Mark said, my name is Liz McGee, and I am a watercolorist. That is my medium. And I'm very faithful to it. I really don't do other mediums. I love watercolor, and I'm going to do a little demonstration, which will be fun for people to see, you know, kind of watercolor in action. So, Mark, I have been with Art on Groton Bank. I have participated as an artist yes, for, you have for oh, six, seven, eight years. Longer than I've been right. running the event, yes. And, and as a Groton res resident and as a also, like you, a um, resident of Groton Bank, where it's hosted, it's a wonderful spot. Groton Bank, in my opinion, is a, like a little undiscovered still undiscovered gem in the area. There's a lot of history, there are wonderful homes, there's some great restaurants like Paul's Pasta, I think everybody's heard of that yeah, yeah. in our area. So uh, this is a nice, this is a wonderful one day show and having it tied in now with the, um, see what- The Groton Bank Day. The Groton Bank Day, yeah. uh, people can come and make a whole day of it. So do, June 9th. Yeah, excellent, excellent. And you'll be able to meet Liz in person, see her work, and of course, buy some of her work, <laughs> um, which is uh, an asset to any home, I have to say. Um, so tell us a little bit more about uh, some of the beautiful work that we're looking at. I think you won an award for um, the one behind you. Yes, this is, uh, we have a little display here. Um, some of the work I've been doing. I teach watercolor. That's one of the things I do love to do. I teach at the um, Senior Center, uh, right. the Groton Senior Center on Route 117. And so, Mark, look at today. So I tell me, if, if, if just to interrupt you, but uh, if any of our viewers would like to sign up uh, for one of your classes, um, let's tell them how they can go okay. about doing Okay, and I, I did. I, everything you see up front here is work that that I was was done in the classes. I always demonstrate what we're going to do when everyone goes and does it, and it's very fun. So this is all class work. Um, you can, I have a website. It's very simple. My name, Liz McGee, is probably the first place to start because okay. I list under classes and the dates, the cost, and... Any other information, you can call the Estu uh, no, the, the Groton Senior Center to find out, or you can just, I have a Facebook page, Liz McGee Watercolor, you, know, you got to do all these things right. today. So I have pretty much a good online presence that you can find well, good, me good, because I know when you're done today showing us your demonstration, people are going to say, gee, you know what, I'd like to learn how to do that. So, yeah. Well, Mark just told me he's going to start painting, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I am definitely going to sign up for your, your uh, July and August class. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, it is. I, watercolor, I, I do love the medium, and the way I teach, I think, is, is like I have a have-no-fear approach because it, it's not the scary medium. I don't know why that people think. Now, in, in New England, because we're a traditional, more traditional part of the country, oils are always sort of more uh, people, they think they, I feel sometimes like the, the stepchild because okay. watercolor is a newer medium. 
in, in, it's, it, not to give a whole history here, but if you went out to the West Coast or California, much more watercolor, I think the light and everything, but watercolor is a great medium. It's a lot simpler than people think. It's, it is very forgiving. And so I'm going to do a demonstration. Great. And uh, I'm going to stand. This is one of the things that I encourage people to do, especially when they paint, is to stand. So back here, I have this little setup, and I'm going to paint on a, uh, well, this is a 9 by 12. It's called Arches Watercolor Paper. It's a pad. It's a great little setup. But this is what I have been working on in the class. These are, we started yesterday. So these are, I don't know, let's see. It's a little washed out with the lights. I'm trying to see. But this is what my style, and I will tell you this, just to give a, I have, of course, to my, nope, here we go, to the left here. This is a autumn scene. It's called um, Hidden, Hidden Pond. It's a, New England's beautiful. Hidden behind my head. Right, <laughs> there's a lot to paint in New England. And one thing I love living here is there's just no shortage between the water, you know, what they say, coast and country. It's beautiful. But I do have a line of birds I like to do. This is my latest bird this spring. This is called, it is um, Lady Spring. And this particular painting did just win an award this spring at a show, uh, a large show up in Marble, Connecticut. So I was happy with that. That's great. So I do a variety of different styles, but this is one I really like that is very fun and it's very loose. It can tend, you can make it as abstract as you want, or you can go in and render it and make it into something. And that is my favorite style, as they say, every artist. So as you see here on my bird, the background is, is very loose and, and kind of more abstract, very fun. And my bird, people say, oh, I can see every single feather on that. So, you know, you, it's fun to uh, it's be loose and beautiful. fun when you want. And then you can render. It's called rendering. You, can, you sit down like, and you just kind of really take portions of it and make it very realistic. So here's, this is a, a, a picture here of spring potting getting ready for all that. This is a garden shed over here. We have the garden shed. These are all things that we did in the class that was very fun. So here we go. I'm going to show you how to really just have at it on a blank piece of paper. Because like in writing, the most important thing is to get past the white, the blank sheet of paper. <laughs> that scariness of that, like, where do I start? Where do What's you the start? the first stroke that I make? Am I going to ruin it right away? Right. And, <laughs> and this is where I really just put, you know, almost... Push everyone, look, we're just, it's a roller coaster ride is what I say. You go up, you know how you go up and it's chug, 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 chug. But in the meantime, there's a lot of preparation that Mark saw me do. You got to lay everything out, get your paints ready, get your paper. So once you, I call that chugging up the roller coaster. But when you get ready, that's it. When you go down that ride, you can't stop. That's the whole point. You just got to enjoy the ride. Just Scream as much as you want, whatever. <laughs> but you just have to do it. There's no stopping. You're committed. And that's, to me, one of the funnest styles. And, and I would say not every single thing you do has to be a masterpiece. You have to enjoy it oh. and have fun with it and not beat yourself up if it doesn't come out right. Is that Oh, that yes, correct? absolutely. This, any artist will know this. Um, this is what I tell you. It's just a piece of paper. You, you just have to really get over the fear. Anyone, you know, I... Seriously, I mean, maybe one out of ten paintings that I do in my classes, I really frame, enter shows, get juried in. It, it is. Uh, you just have to have no fear. That's my approach. Just paint. Because it's an enjoyment. It's good for your soul. You're doing for the for the love of creating something, of seeing something of beauty. So, Great. Uh, so here today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this blank piece of paper and we're going to put all sorts of stuff on here. So I'm going to start right here. And um, Mark can see me if you want to make any comments. I'm going to take three primary colors. I'm going to take a lot of yellow. So if you know your primaries, I've got yellow laid on the, my palette here. I have a lot of red. That's your next strong primary. Maybe you know what a primary is? <laughs> Do you know versus a secondary color? Can you tell everyone any of that? Oh, gosh. Going back <laughs> Am I putting you on the spot? Oh, primaries are, the, well, first of all, they're the ones that you can't mix and make with other colors. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, right. Primaries are the colors that, that, that are standalone. Right. They, they, you cannot make them. But they themselves, the three primaries, so here I'll show you, maybe we can, can make other colors. Can make other colors. Blue, See, I have yellow, red. And red. Exactly. Yep. So we have those all kind of mixed up. 
And then I'm gonna make, I'm gonna take a fun green, like a deeper emerald green in another corner. And I'm gonna add a little blue to it. So out of darks. One of the hardest things, and I actually str I struggle with this a lot still, is to get good darks in. It's a very scary thing to put something very permanent, very dark on. So we kind of wait to the end to do that. So I have my colors all mixed. I am going to next, I'm going, and I have what I call my bag of tricks. I tell people, there's a lot of little, that's what I love about watercolor. You can, it, what I like is that you can, through different techniques, get the most incredible little nuanced um, sections happen on your painting that you could not literally paint in a million years. It just happens. Watercolor, as they say, it's, I say, let the watercolor paint itself. Oh, just let right. it do its thing because it will do amazing things. So let's hope. Let's hope <laughs> I get lucky <laughs> and the watercolor I have all the faith. <laughs> paints itself. So we're going to take this piece of paper here. You want me to help? Mm -hmm. Let's see. I'm okay. I'm trying to figure it. Should I just stay this way? Yeah, that's fine. There we go. There we go. I'm going to spray it. I have a little spray bottle and we're just going to spray a bunch of water on here. All right. And then I'm just going to pick up my brush. I have, I'm going to use this as a quill brush. It's a good watercolor brush. It holds a ton of paint and I'm just going to grab as much paint on it as I can. You start with your yellow. You start in watercolor with your lightest colors and I'm just going to put it on. See, I'm just going to take this and I'm just not even, I could do this blind. I could just, you're just going to put a bunch of color on there. See that yellow? Yep. It's going to drip down. We're going to let it have some fun. I could take and give a little spray here or there to make it move a little more. So that, we did our yellow initially. We're going to take some of the red now. Red will be the next color. And we're just going to, again, I'm not even going to hardly just going to put it in couple of places not hopefully in the same thing and maybe I'll start to spray this thing a little now where I get red and uh, yellow mixing I hopefully get some oranges so we're going to let that now what I tell people is okay and they can pick up a little more of that brush of that red you don't always have to paint it on let's just fling it on oh Mark I should have told you you should have had a that's raincoat okay. on that's okay that's okay go ahead <laughs> See I that? I we're going to put a couple little fun. Oh, I love it. All right. So we're going to do that. So you don't have to be afraid of this. No, you can this, just, one, this is the like, best part. Attack it. Just attack it. You should have seen all these people in my class yesterday. Many of them never painted. They had the time of their life. They had a lot of fun. So now we're going to put in this blue. See this? All right. And we're going to uh, just put some of that in. And we're going to spray a few places. See what I want to do? Let's see. Now, see, wow, let's turn it that. upside down. Let's go this wow, way. Wow, that's so It's cool. beautiful. This is let the watercolor paint itself. Now, let's oh, see. All oh, right. Wow. So it's very abstract. We have a lot going on here. But one of the funnest things we're going to do right now at this stage is we're going to add salt. Salt is a very fun technique. You put some in. And what is it? What it does is it pulls out the color, so you get this really neat oh. texture. It helps it to have. You can make little flowers out of it. It's a wonderful wow. little technique. All right. Now let's add a few. Now I'm going to just show you a couple things. Let's just do something that's fun. There's no end to the little tricks. A straw. Who would have thought? Oh, <laughs> okay. Let's just do something fun with this. I'm going to take this darker color that I mixed, which is right here. All right, see, I'm not even afraid. We're just going to put some of this dark. Can you see that dark color there? Let's get some on the edges here. Let's go right here. One more big batch of it. All right, now let's take some of that. Let's just blow it. Oh, wow. Around. And see if we can get some more interesting. See all those fun little rivulets? That is At so the bottom, cool. can you keep seeing that? I hope, let's see here. That is so cool. Oh, it's very fun. It's very fun. Now, let's do a couple more little things. Now, we could take another one of my little tricks I like is what I call my palette knife, which I didn't have out here. This is, this is actually a tool that is used in oil a lot. I was going to say, I, I remember right. that as my, when I was taking But oil. I like to use it because, again, you can get, let's just say I wanted to pull out of here some branches that can event like if this was going to be the background for some trees and flowers which i do have in the front paintings i had massed berries in them 
which is another so part of the technique. So you're sort of scraping the paint I'm off. I'm scraping it off. See, and it's giving me a nice, this could become, um, oh, it's beautiful. I do this a lot for trees. Uh, I do rocks this way. It's very fun. All right, now let's go and do a couple more colors that are darker. Can you see that? And let's spray this a little bit more. We need to get it just a little more going towards the bottom. And you can see how these colors, but I think the yellow in there, we're going to add a little more green to this. All right, that's our next color that I'm gonna take into some of these yellows. See that? Maybe we can get some leaves in here going. But see, I'm just putting it in and I'm not getting too concerned. But see how that little bit of green in there? Wow, it just pops. It just pops and you can turn it into, when it's done and dry, into leaves. Because this could be a great background. And actually, let's go this way. Let's turn it this way now. And let's spray some of this this way. Spray some of it that way. All right. I might even put a little more salt in. Now to you can, this. when you're doing something like this, you don't have to start and finish all at once. If, can well, you like let it dry and then go back to yes, it later? Yes, this and is add why, layers? yes, this is the first stage. This is just getting rid of your white paper and having some fun, all oh, right? Okay. Literally. Because once this is dry, we take the salt off if you had put mask on it, and then we start to build. This is what I did here. I had masked my bird. Let's see, can you see that? And afterwards, I was able to put in the dark branches, and then I was able to take the mask off and render the bird. Oh, wow. Order. So it is in stages, but this is one of the most fun, so I thought I would go ahead and do this. Now, we've got that blue, let's, or that green, which really did pop nice. I want to make oh, sure you yeah. can see some of this. Yeah. There's a bit of a glare there. Yep. And it's yep. totally abstract. This is going to become very light when it's dry what well, thing about watercolors is you think they're very strong colors but they dry 30 percent less oh, that's why you really okay. do build up so, so we don't, don't be afraid of putting on the don't color. be afraid of putting on the color i think what we're going to do now is i'm going to go ahead and add some deeper green because in our greens let's just go back on there oh wow. and let's just keep building up can you see that in a couple of spots especially I love the way it's like layers and layers layers and layers yeah. now all right, so I wanted to put a some darker greens because, like I said, the darks are so important. Let's just get a couple of darks coming from Starts the Starts giving it lots of depth. Gives it a lot of depth. All right, so we'll, and we can even just, you, know, you can continue to spray it to get it to bleed. Now, what you can see, Mark, can you see this especially? Because see my salt, what yes, it's doing I do. here. I do. It's doing some fun little things. It really is. It is. It's just, this is just total fun. This I'm going to make sure fun. that people you know this can't, is a really coarse salt. It's, you don't want to do the yeah, really fine. Actually, I have started to use even salt as a part. Uh, in Celtic, it, this is actually Celtic sea salt, which has the best, I don't know what it, properties, that it, it, it makes a very nice little filigree, um, almost little flower, little florets. Yeah, it so does. It yeah, does. It does. Now, let's, um, let's go back here. The last thing for now I want to just do a little bit of is let's throw in some more bright colors because we did use, I think I'm going to really like that green in there, but if this becomes more of a floral, you know what I look I like in this too is this is if you have a paint, uh, photograph that's got a soft focus background and then the, t the image on top is in focus. So that's sort of what we're doing. We're making the soft focus background. Okay. And so but let's take, I have a favorite color we all and it's called opera pink. <laughs> oh. And because we're in spring and painting, let's do this. Let's take some of this opera pink and let's put it in there. Because wow. if this is going to become, maybe this will become my little berries in the background. So if I have berries, you can get see rid that? of a lot of frustration in this painting, too. Oh, I absolutely. Yeah. There's no reason to. Um, <laughs> All right, so let's, I don't want to overdo it. This is my thing. One of the most important things at this point is, as everybody says, or they'll say to me in the class, Liz, put the brush down. <laughs> you don't want to overwork. You want to see, now see how that's traveling? Let's see. Yeah. See, does that look already, like in this way, let's see, is this way? It, it, it can become, a, it has a Japanese look and it can become the background ah, for something. Yeah, so you can move it any you different You can move way it any way. I mean, actually, you might find out that you actually like it this way but see the sheen is too bad but uh so we're gonna and, and see how the colors are blending yes. and we have that salt so at this point i could say 
put the brush down, let's let it dry for a few minutes, and then let's see what we want to do with it. I could come back on in a few, a little bit and put some more darks in, and I have other little, little tools in my trick bag to see what we have. So, oh. all right, so we can see that one yep. last time for now. Now, I do like the way the green is dripping. It almost looks like those pink flowers, like a wisteria. It does. It could become... Yes. So, because I'm looking at it here, and I see one little spot. Where is it? I think it's right here. Wait, wait, where am I seeing? Right here. Let me just put a little There's a something. lot of movement in there. Oh, yeah. That's what's so fun. All right. So, we're just going to let that be, and we'll come back and look, look at, at it in a few minutes. Okay. Now that I have totally made a mess. <laughs> hey, that's what, it's fun. Isn't that fun? Mm -hmm. So, if you're looking for something new on your bucket list to try it, I say watercolor. It's, it is. It's good for the soul. Well, I can tell you must have a lot of fun in your classes. Oh, right. Everyone, yes. Everyone's just sort of loving the ideas and, and, and trying to put their own little stamp on it, if you will. Oh, and everyone is so different. So what we do after everyone's like done this technique, then you put it all up. And it's just, it is incredible. The creativity that comes out people, it's just all so different. No one looks the same. Different colors. Some are more light, and, and some are darker. Your different people's personalities comes out. The really bold people that do love color, no problem. The, the people who are a little more subtle in their personality, it's a little more pastel looking. So, now as the instructor and the teacher, do you ever have to be sort of a little cruel and say, "Well, you know, you really shouldn't have done this," or? That wasn't a good technique. Let me show you how to do it differently. Uh, it, it, do you ever have to? Uh, no, no. It, no, no, no. There's no <laughs> reason for that because it, people, this is why I say you have to be for, you have to forgive yourself. You have to be forgiving. It is just a piece of paper. So All I'm doing is showing you a technique. You have to go home and practice it good. 10 times yourself. See, I, I like that, and that's why I asked it because I knew you, what your answer was going to be because it's not like back when you were in high school and going to art class right, where right, right. It, it, they sort of didn't make it all that fun, at least in my memory. Of the well, art maybe some nice. teachers, right? You had to yeah. get a grade, you know? Yeah. It was subjective. Right, right. Uh, yeah. But there's none of that here. You just give it what you like. You stop you when have, you're ready and or you can keep working it. You have you're... fun with it and you just go as wild or as simple as you want to exactly. go. Exactly. And if you don't like it, it's a piece of paper, you throw it away and you start over. Yeah, you flip it and you paint on the other side. Of, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so, right? you see, there you, there you go. Right. Yeah. So I'll show you. So some of these, and again, it's hard to see a little mm. bit here. Now this one I had actually masked in the berries. And if you can see the difference between these two, there's a very different color palette to them. One is much more uh, uh, magenta and mauves and, or green and emeralds in it. So yeah, everyone is different. Now, I do love to paint a court also according to the season. So since we're in spring, we're doing a lot of kind of bright, florally kind of um, things that have a lot of color. I love to paint winter. Winter is actually one mm -hmm. of my favorite because uh, there's such a snow. You get so many good reflections. You know, I, you can actually paint snow on. You flick this paint to get it to look like snow. snow uh, winter is very fun to paint. Do you always paint in studio, or do you do you go out on location, maybe by the water or in a field or something like that? Uh, I do. It's called plein air painting. Okay. And so I do. Uh, actually, last year I was part of the Stonington Garden Club there. Uh, they have this garden by the sea. They open up some of the beautiful homes in Stonington, and I was had. Uh, was invited invitational to paint in one of the gardens, and that was fun. And I do, and I will say, I'd love to paint your view, Mark. Oh, you have okay. a stellar view of the uh, Thames River. Yeah, I'm very, Sunday. very lucky like, to yeah. live where I live and see the water and the river and everything else. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah. And I, I know you've done things. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, hanging in my house, I have uh, a submarine that you did going by the oh, ledge that's light. That's right, yeah. Because that's the view I see out of my living room. Exactly. And you were kind enough to, uh, to do that for me. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, I love it. I love it. So can we finish this before we're out of time? Well, or? I guess what to finish what uh, I can add. Well, this I'll do my one last uh, piece on this. Let's see if what the it's drying a little bit more. You can yeah. see some of that. See how there's yeah. sheep. It does have this look of a Chinese uh, sort of a spring 
hanging it branches. Certainly does. does. It? it really, really certainly it does. does. So well, from a design point of view, at this point, what I would do is I would let it dry. The best way is to let it dry naturally. Uh, okay. You can put a hair dryer on it. But the salt, if you let the salt, too bad we can't get a super close up because the, you're beginning yeah. to see the fun uh, uh, techniques that the salt is doing. But at this point, I look for design. Okay. I like having that I have one corner that's pretty open. Every corner in a painting should be a little bit different, so I might start looking at my design, where I need to tweak it, where I need to go with it. And nothing should be centered in the middle of the palette either. No, really... good design says it's called a third, a third, a third. You usually put it in a quad, third quadrant. Okay. That's sort of, there's some, but let's, let's see what happens with this, these branches again. What happens is it fills in. Uh, so now I'm going to go back and pull that. So let's see if we pull some out again and get a few more. So I have a little bit that are going to be white, but we'll have some dark ones in there. And actually this so might end up, cool. so I would paint on top of it, like in here, very realistic. Mm -hmm. What is that tree called? Because the, the, they're all, they're booming now. The, the pink dogwoods? The pink the, dogwoods or the, 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 the ornamental cherries. Perhaps. Ornamental cherries, yeah. so there's a lot. So we could, I would get yeah, some pictures. it's a little pictures. early for the dogwoods, I think. Yeah, so see, uh, I can continue to work that. Let's get, the, and then, uh, you know, so there I see, I, that, now I see where I'm going. I'm going to start to put in some branches and some of these Mm. Like you think, what did you call it? An or ornament? or ornamental uh, cherry tree. Ornamental or cherry like tree. That. So yeah. that's what it'll become. And I have my soft focus background. There's things wow. you can do to tweak it. And I might put in one more dark. So this is where I would look and I would see, I have a sponge, these soft oh. Uh, oh, yeah, please. sea sponges. But um, at minutes. this point, all right. So I would just go in and I would just pick up some of the color that I had started with. And I might just go in and... You know, again, like I'm cool. always saying, add those darks so we can oh, that's, that's accent so a few places. And I might give it one or two little sprays. It's so much fun. You're using all kinds of things. I mean, how can this things. not be fun? You cannot. You can't go wrong. This is, uh, you can't. So this is my technique, how I teach, and it's called How to Never, how never to Ruin a Watercolor. So there <laughs> you are. Great. <laughs> okay. That's great. That's great. Well, Liz, if, if you want to continue to, to uh, paint mm -hmm. while I take us out of the show, that would be fine. All right, we'll just keep letting it yeah. do its thing. Uh, mm -hmm. While she paints, I'll, I'll just take us out of the show. And um, uh, thank everyone for tuning in, of course. Uh, please take advantage. Uh, look up Lee, uh, Liz McGee's work. Uh, take a class. It's wonderful. I want to make mention that on June 14th, 5.30 to 8 here at SEC TV Studios. There is going to be an art show. Um, Liz will be participating. They always do a beautiful job. It's open and free to the public. Please come down and see us. You get to see what this great studio looks like. Great food, wine, music. It's a really fun night. Come down. I'd love to meet you, um, show you the studio. And, of course, Art and Groton Bank. Put that on your calendar for June 9, Groton Bank Day and certainly come back in and tune in to Around the Time with Mark real soon. Liz, thank you so much for, for uh, this demonstration and this great pr piece of work. And you're gonna, I, I'm going to donate this. That is going to, to be donated to um, uh, Groton Bank Day and Art and Groton Bank, and uh, some lucky winner who comes to visit us is going to win this exact piece of work. So how's that, everybody? Again, thank you for tuning in, and we're going to see you again real soon.